Here we go right now at 4 o'clock as we take a live look at Carolina Beach from our WRAL live camera network as Tropical Storm Debbie marches slowly toward North Carolina. New at 4 o'clock, the storm is picking up speed and moving a bit quicker toward North Carolina. Fayetteville has declared a state of emergency ahead of the storm's arrival with major river flooding forecasts coming in very shortly. And we have tornado warnings at the coast. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Lena Tillette. And I'm Dan Haggerty. So the worst of the storm expected to be here around Thursday. We have crews that are going to be here live in the studio as well as out around around our area, keeping you informed on everything you need to know as this storm approaches. But first, we want to go to meteorologist Kat Campbell. She is in the WRE, WRL Severe Weather Center timing all of this out, Kat. The rain is already here, but this is just the beginning, and these rain bands aren't that bad compared to what is on the way soon. Some of the heavier rain bands that are in South Carolina are going to start to move in late tomorrow with the worst of it on Wednesday. There is a tornado warning in effect right now for Brunswick County. This is near the coast until 415. Some of the popular areas that are at risk in this tornado warning Sunset Beach, Ocean Isle Beach and Carolina Shores. There's another 15 minutes in that warning and there have been at least four tornado warnings that the North Carolina coast today. Still the greatest concern is the flood risk, which is now the highest we have seen in almost five years in our area. We have the extreme flood risk on Thursday. Our latest rainfall totals were going with four to seven inches of rain north of the triangle and east of the triangle, including Rocky Mount there and from the triangle point south all the way to the southern beach is five to 10 inches of rain in the forecast, and that is likely through Friday night. Here's Tropical Storm Debbie, the center of it just crossing into South Carolina. Top winds 40 miles per hour. It's moving even slower than it was yesterday, just crawling at five miles per hour. The latest forecast track, no big adjustments in intensity, but notice the center has shifted west of Raleigh. While that really doesn't change the impacts for us much, what this does affect is the fact that we could see an isolated tornado. We may actually end up seeing the isolated tornado risk on Thursday shift west to include the triangle if that trend continues with the center passing a little farther to the west. Future cast our high resolution models are in as we head into the overnight hours. We could see some lull in these rain bands, but they pick back up by tomorrow afternoon, moving from south to north by late morning, and there should be some heavy rain around by the evening. But Thursday is definitely looking like it'll be the worst of it for us already a flooding threat for the morning commute Thursday, and we see these bands just relentless bands of rain moving into the area with heavy rain through the afternoon and evening. Bottom line here, flash flooding is looking likely on Thursday. If you have the ability to stay at home Thursday, that's the day when you'll want to be cautious and really try to stay off the roads. If you do have to be on the roads for any reason on Thursday, my suggestion is make sure that you're not under a flash flood warning before you hit the roads. Here's what's coming up next. 415, we're talking river flooding. We're getting that new information in right now. 445, we're going to talk about the wind and the power threats with this storm, and a new track will be out at 5 o'clock. Mike Mays will have that for you. Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth is in the storm tracker just north of Charleston with a closer look at some of the damage caused by what could have been a tornado. That's right, we're at Monk's Corner. If you're not familiar with this area, it's about 30 miles north of Charleston, and this is one of four tornado reports. Um, we, we think it's a tornado. That's what the damage looks like. That's what the radar looks like. This is what the Arby's looks like here in Monk's Corner, completely destroyed. Fortunately, we have no reports of any injuries, which is good news. This didn't happen in a neighborhood. It happened in this commercial area. It hit this Arby's. It hit an Applebee's right next door. It hit an auto, um, an auto park. There's some trucks on top of each other. We're going to show you that coming up in the next half hour. But damage from this, what was likely a tornado. All right, having some trouble there from the WRL Storm Tracker. This is Brian Trader in the WRL Live Center. I want to take you to some new video that we just got in of some of the flooding going on right now in Newburn down at the coast. This is from a viewer uh, taken uh, just a little while ago, and you can see some of that high water there already along the North Carolina coast. Also in Charleston, where we just had that live report from Amy, take a look at some of this flooding that uh, was shot earlier this afternoon. They have seen uh, in some spots up to a foot of rain already in Charleston. 
Charleston with more on the way. And of course, that downtown area very prone to flooding. Also, in the last 10 minutes, we have learned that Harnett County Schools will be on a remote schedule tomorrow and Thursday in advance of Debbie and all extracurricular activities have been canceled. Of course, we'll be tracking that through the afternoon here at the WRL Live Center. And we're getting ready for the storm in the triangle. Could see a lot of rain and maybe even some gusty winds. Let's check in with Destiny Patterson live in Raleigh to show us how crews are getting ready. Destiny. Brian, I want you to take a look at this. I'm in the town of Perry. This is essentially like a big vacuum. They're pulling up any extra water or debris ahead of that storm. And all of this is in an effort to help mitigate any flood risks that we're seeing here in the area. Tropical storm Debbie is heading towards the triangle. It's expected to dump even more rain on top of what we've already seen over the last few weeks. We actually started uh, last week talking about this when they first initially started talking about the storm in Florida. Uh, and so we started our preparation then. So the town of Cary is trying to be proactive, including clearing storm drains and training crews on how to safely use their chainsaws when the time comes. You can do that outside. Invariably, some trees will come down. Battalion Fire Chief Andy Hiscock says the town also has water rescue teams on standby and ways to monitor water levels. Our stormwater department can check stream levels and gauges remotely from here and tell us before anyone has to even go out. Hiscock and Simpson say their crews trained for this and they're ready to help when the storm hits the hardest. Town officials also say that they have been working with homeowners associations in neighborhoods where they have bodies of water in order to work with them to lower their water levels as well. Destiny Patterson, WRL News, Wake County. Destiny, thank you. WRAL has the most experienced and largest severe weather team in North Carolina, the only station in the triangle as well with dual Doppler radar and the WRAL storm tracker. So over the next few days, you will see new reports on Debbie from our team here in the studio and live on the ground across multiple counties. Stay with us to stay ahead of the storm. And be sure, always a good reminder, keep that phone of yours charged. In the event that you might lose power, the WRAL News app will help you to stay on top of the storm developments. You can download that app for free from the Apple or Google app stores. Turn on alerts as well to get notified about severe weather in your location.